Whenever it comes time for fair, we have to shave them too. Oh. We have to shave all their hair. That doesn't sound like fun. Um, are they okay? They're not too bad. They're not too bad. Um, they like to chew the extension cord. Do you know anything about the military's health plan, or do you just know that they provide coverage? Or what? I just I don't really know a lot about it. Um, that's something we find out when we go to um, basic train and through talking to a recruiter. And after I sign my enlistment papers, I know that's something that they tell us about, and they give us the packet on the plans. But I know that it's um, there's coverage on dental and there's coverage on health. Which even if it's just the most minimum coverage you can think of, it, a little bit goes a long way whenever it comes to that because every cent whenever you have medical bills counts. At some point, it'll be a relief. I won't have to wake up to go to the barn every morning, but I definitely am going to miss them. It's going to be hard. My office visit with no insurance would cost me $35. My CDL physical at Urgent Care would cost me 75 Now that I have insurance, my office visit is $97, mm -hmm. and my CDL physical is 200 Exactly. It's not always the provider that's setting those prices. It's the insurance companies. There, there is a big business in this country. But we're expected when someone smokes two packs of cigarettes a day and doesn't want to hear about any kind of, you know, uh, maybe not, you know, anything with quitting smoking, but yet when you come with emphysema or cancer, it's the health care provider because they didn't cure your emphysema or cancer. People are living to be sicker and sicker, and everybody wants Cadillac health insurance, but they want to pay prices for a, a, you know, a used car. In this country, people need to be better health consumers. If you look around the church, how, look at the BMIs. How many of these people, their farmers have? How many of you have any kind of sun protection on? Yet you'll be out there on your tractors, and when you have to go pay a fortune to get something taken off of the dermatology, you complain about the price when a $3 bottle of sun stuff would have protected you. People need to start to win in this country, and it's not just with health care, need to start taking responsibility for their own, for their self. Well, I had a heart attack and double bypass in 08. And then in 09, I developed an ulcer on my right foot. And after it was all said and done, I lost two toes, three bones due to, I have diabetes. So I go to, see, I go to an endocrinologist for my diabetes. I go to a kidney doctor for my kidneys because I have gout, things like that. And I have a heart doctor and I have a cardiologist. Then I got a general surgeon I go to about once every six months for my feet. So in the process, I lost a toe and a bone in the other foot due to an ulcer on that foot. Face the nation, they get on there, these lawmakers, and they get on there and say, oh, you can get affordable health care, and you, there's subsidies out there for all these people that don't make a lot of money. But if you don't make a lot of money and you get on there, you don't qualify for the subsidies. Right. So they have subsidies, but nobody who gets them, not the people who need them. My son-in-law paid $600 this year because he don't have it. Yep. So when you pay your taxes, it's an additional $600 fine because his insurance would have been as much as he makes. There is a way to fix We should look at how France does it, how Canada does it. They got free health insurance, but they're not soaking the people. Best thing to hope you don't get sick. And breathe. Other side, straight leg to the sky, and pull it toward me. Let it go. Pull it toward me a second time, and let it go. Many doctors now have to go into computers, and when they're in the office with you, they're re they hate it. They would like to talk to the patient, look at the patient, because you can look at your patient and see if they're in pain, see what they look like, color. But if they're sitting there typing on this thing, they don't like it. 
but the government is insisting that they do it this way. They have to ask people, do you smoke? I haven't been asked this yet, but I hear it's coming. Do you have guns in the house? And then they have to report that. Well, it's an invasion of our privacy, number one. That's not health care. Well, the smoking is health care related. But if somebody's going to smoke, they're going to smoke. I don't smoke. <laughs> uh, and you look at what's happened with Obamacare, you know, that's a disaster. It's a disaster. It's unfair. It's driving doctors out of the business. But uh, so Trump is our only hope. <laughs> Obnoxious as he can be, <laughs> he's our only hope. So I'm not quite sure what he's saying about health care. I haven't heard that from him. What is he saying? Have you ever noticed how you never see a full body picture of Uncle Sam? You always see him from the waist up? Sure. Do you know why that is? Why? Because he's got a dick this long and this big around and you're next and if we knew that, we'd be afraid and they don't want to frighten us. So they only show him from the waist up. <laughs> I bought this building and opened this store so I could feel like a contributing member to society again instead of just sitting around the house collecting money. I can't get a regular job. Nobody will hire me. Nobody will hire me because I get in such pain that I just can't function. And the pain can last for days and weeks at a time. Um, my guts get so bad that Today has been a good day. I've gone to the bathroom eight times. <laughs> Today is a good day. Um, I'll probably wind up going another three or four times. No employer is going to put up with someone that's got to run to the bathroom eight or ten times to go to the bathroom. You know, and that doesn't even include the number of times I have to run to the bathroom just to pass gas because I don't know what I'm going to get. Social Security is reviewing my disability because I'm working. Because I created something to give myself something to do. I don't make any money. You know, I kind of always say if you understand your limitations and work within them, there's not really anything you can't accomplish. The flaw to my theory is if your limitations require you to depend on someone else, well, then you're just SOL. <laughs> Then um, about two months later, the brain tumor came back. So he had surgery a second time for that. And uh, then they did uh, radiation treatments. And then they did gamma knife. He had that done twice. And when he was ready for the stem cell therapy, they do that in Morgantown where he was, where his oncology doctor was and that's where he had been treated the whole time um, but the insurance would not cover it if we got it there he had to go all the way to Baltimore so I mean that's costing us big money because we go down and stay for th three four five days at a time who gets the bills he gave me permission to take care of his bills and things, and I don't share a whole lot of that with him because he's got enough to worry about. I'm not a big fan of a lot of regulations. Um, you know, back the union at one time, I thought it was a great thing. It did the working man a great job. Anymore, some of them have too much power and and don't want to beat on government too bad. <laughs> but the regulations they keep throwing at us is just, it's getting harder and harder for 
any business, not just small business, to stay, you know, competitive. And not only competitive, just stay in business. I do without a lot of things just because we cover, you know, the health insurance. When it jumps, you know, 26% in one year, it's like, what, what do you, how do you cover that? You just suck it in and keep going. <laughs> I had a light injury. I had required some stitches. And the stitches broke and I kept working. Had I taken a week off, the stitches would have been fine. But in this society, it still paints this picture of, well, I'm a man. And I don't go to the doctor unless my leg's about to fall off. And if I can't fix it with duct tape, then hell, I'll go to the doctor. So We're inside of the Love Chapel, which is a part of Love, Light, and Liberty Ministries. There was a murky substance and that the spirit of the living God hovered over the water. Yeah. It doesn't matter which translation, when we look at the New American translation, it says thus. <laughs> We're pastors, and part of our job is to encourage healing of the whole person. What is health care? It's not really health care. It's really disease care. We're caring for the disease. We have a pill for everything. And to me, we ought to be investing in keeping people healthy. I mean, you know, we have a whole food industry that's set up to kill us. I'm just um, an American part of the Republic, which you don't believe exists anymore, but we're still here. Can you give me the gist of what your response would be to hearing that there's a film about health care and I'm soliciting opinions? And, and I told you I don't have health care. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, I don't have, I left Massachusetts because um, it was mandatory to have health care and you would be arrested. In my mind, I figured you'd be arrested, but instead they started withholding your taxes and your pay and stuff because you weren't signed up. There is no dental. What's up with that? Yeah, healthcare, dental, I feel like a lot of tree landed on my jaw. I don't need all the other healthcare, I need dental. But you have to sign up or you're out. Um, so I left, I left before that. And I've been into organic foods and Reiki and different alternative modes of healing just to learn how to get through pain of tooth, you know. When it happens and I go into the hospital and they say they can't take me, I'll have to figure it out. And that's just, it's, it's not that I'm leaving it up to God. Um, and because, um, yeah, he's already left it up to me and I'm thinking I'm just gonna have to figure it out. One philosophy might be that the best way to care for people is inspire them to care for themselves. Another philosophy might be the best way to care for people is to take what you have and give it to them because they need it. And I would say that both of those philosophies um, can be justified from a Christian standpoint. Christians are always interested in charity, but then another debate that people might have is, so which is charitable? To take someone's resources and give them to someone else or to tell somebody that they ought to take their own resources and give them to someone else. Those are two very different perspectives again. And, um, you know, uh, I, I can see someone trying to make, try, making an argument for both of those options. But uh, taking something from somebody, of course, would also be construed as stealing. And uh, it certainly wouldn't be a Christian thing to do. We don't use commercial and medical insurances. We feel biblically that it's our responsibility to take care of our own. And look at the work they put into this quilt. 
what we would feel if we would use medical insurance, it, it would take away from the, the, what the church is here for, to help each other. We have a board of trustees, and, and the hospital bills, as they accumulate, they take care of that and distribute the money. Everybody wants to help. That's a nice feeling about the whole thing. They come here to support us by buying. The whole community wants to help. We don't know if there's anything in particular that this money will go for now, excepting just for existing hospital bills. What should we do about it? I mean, we, we have any discussion here today, but what, who, who we get a hold of? Well, we gotta start with damn lawmakers. Fix healthcare, it's really simple. Make all drugs legal. The type of community we have here in Accident is phenomenal. Let me tell you, we held, the firemen held a buckwheat dinner, buckwheat pancake dinner, and sausage gravy dinner for her benefit to help her with them with their medical cost, they raised $10,000 at that dinner. People don't know where our tax money's going. That's, that's a, a real problem and how it's being spent. And when you protest, they just blow you off. They don't do anything or they lie. Let's really take a look at what is, what is it to be healthy? What is it to live, you know, comfortably in a country that really has everything, you know, everything that is required for people to live healthy? Everything. And you have one that you wanted yeah. to read? Yeah, this is kind of a off the wall, so I figured you might like it. It's called 1933. In 1933, they stole America from you and me. They took the gold, they took the silver, and traded us little green pieces of paper. Now I'm gonna call you a slave, so don't call me a fool. It's not about being black or white or being a Jew. It's about being told to wave the red, white, and blue. Now we laughed at the Indians for taking bottles of glass, and they laugh at us for bending over and taking it up the ass. We laughed at the Mexicans for losing their California and they laugh at us for losing our America. So I'm gonna call you a slave, so don't call me a fool. It's not about being black or white or being a Jew. It's about being sold the red, white, and blue. 